There has to be, what has God done lately? What has God taken you out of lately? Amen? What encounter has happened since we came to church? See, when we come to church, we get saved. That's our first encounter. God reaches to where we're at. He pulls you out. Right? But then what? It's like, and I've told some people, it's like a timeline, right? Do y'all remember the timelines like in, you know, I don't know, fifth grade, sixth grade? Maybe we started learning about timelines where you have the negative going that way, then you have the positive going this way, right? And then you have the zero in the middle, right? Some of us were negative five. Some of us were negative 20. Some of us were negative 555. I don't know, right? We get saved and God puts us at zero and we think we made it. Amen. We're saved. I'm, 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 in, I'm in church now. No, you're starting at zero. Now what? What's going to get you that way? Amen. Encounter after encounter. Lord, what else? Lord, you said, you said back here at 555, you said, okay, now I'm right here. Okay. Where do I go? Because you said back over there, you said that I would be here, but now where am I going? Amen? Salvation is not the end. You haven't arrived. Hey, I'm saved. Hey. No. Now what? Look, man, it, it, and it's hard because it's like, where to go? Where, where, God, where? You said go, but where? Amen? It's like, it's like I, I think I told, I told my wife, it's like, I keep hearing jump and jump and go and, and, and go. And, and, and I'm like, where, Lord, where? It's like a big pool, right? You're in a big pool and you're on a diving board and God's saying, Dive. Amen? Now, now, look, I'm putting myself out there, but that's between me and God. Amen? But what now? How are you going to get on the positive? Where do we go from here? Because we can go and spin our wheels every year of our Christian walk with that first encounter. And nothing happens after that. Is God speaking to somebody this morning? We can't go off of yesterday's faith. I heard this preacher say one time, God said that he is, I am. I am, not I was, and not I'm going to be, I am. So when God tells you that every day, he's now. He's now. We can't go on yesterday's anointing. That was for yesterday. We can go on yesterday's manna. Pastor, this house of manna was not what it was when it started. And it's not going to be what it is now. It's not. Just in the time that we've been here, there's growth. There's growth. We don't see it just like we don't see a plant grow. But the roots are getting deeper. The roots are getting deeper. With no roots, there's no, there's no, there's no plant. Hallelujah. I don't know who that was for, but. From the first encounter... Jacob heard God. If we go to his sixth encounter before he actually arrived back at his father's house, the Bible says that he saw God. How many know there's a difference between hearing God and seeing God? 
Because we go all our lives hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing. But if you never see God move, God has a way of reaching all your senses. Not for our sake. Right? Look, we got to understand God doesn't do things to prove a point to us. God does it because he said he would. Right? And what was going on is that Jacob had negotiations and God had, let me say this, God had a covenant, Jacob had a contract. See, a covenant is, I'm promising you this, regardless of what happens, I'm promising you this. A covenant is, if you do this for me, I do this for you. We have a contract. If one of us breaks this contract, deal's over. Amen? That's the difference between a covenant and a contract. So Jacob had a contract. What did, what did he say? He says, if... God does this for me. And if he brings me back to his father, how then he will be my God. Right? But what did God say? I will give you. I will be with you. Amen? Do we got to go back and read it? Amen? Let's go back and read it. Genesis, 20, uh, Genesis 28. Uh, let, me, let me start in verse 16. When Jacob awoke from his sleep, he thought, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I was not aware of it. He was afraid and said, How awesome is this place. This is none other than the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. Early the next morning, Jacob took the stone and had placed under his head and set it up as a pillar. Uh, let me jump to verse 20. Then Jacob made a vow saying, If God will be with me and will watch over me on this journey I am taking and I will... And will give me food to eat and close the word. So I return safely to my father's house. Then the, then the Lord will be my God. Then the Lord will be my God. Then the Lord will be my God. And what did God say? I'm going to do this. And Jacob said, well, if you're going to do this, then he will be my God. God doesn't have to prove a point to any one of us. God doesn't, is not going to fulfill what he has called to do in your life for your sake so you can believe in him. God already is. Whether we believe him, in him or not, God is. He does it because he said he was going to do it. Does it make sense? He said he was. He said he was. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. That's <laughs> why I told you it's a lot. It's, it's a lot. Amen. <clears throat> the next thing is that we have to expect the next encounter. And that was all God when, when, when Pastor Marty was up here. You got you to expect it. You got to expect it. You have to expect it. Like, Lord, you said, but what now? Where? Listen. We have to be able to listen. Expect. Every service in this place, every Sunday, we have to expect. We have to expect. Is it today? It's like, is it today? Right? Okay, okay, that didn't help. Is it today? No. Every day, Lord, is it today? Lord, it's like, you know, it's like your kids, right, when they ask you for something. Oh, man, they don't leave you alone. They don't let you forget what you said. Amen? You said, you, Mom, hey, you said. I didn't say, Mom. I didn't say, Dad, you said. Right? And every day it's like, it's funny, man, my son Ezekiel, every, every day, like, Dad, remember? Right, here's my reminder, too. <laughs> Dad, remember? And I'm like, all right, so, all right, so Sally, like, we have to. Now we have to. Right? Because, first of all, he's not going to leave us alone. 
right? And sometimes we have to like, God, is it today? Hey, Lord, is it today? How about today? And God is like, God will either say yes, no, or wait. That's it. Don't get mad when he says no. Don't get mad when he says wait either. Amen? But God will say yes, no, or wait. But every day we got to expect, Lord, is it today? Is it today? And God, you'll know. Amen? What's hard is when we face the opposition. Amen? And this is, this is where I want to park a little bit because opposition is rough, man. It's rough. Amen? Opposition keeps us from expecting. And because we don't expect, it keeps us from our next encounter. 20 years Jacob spent in opposition. 20 years. And the last six was probably the worst. Let's turn our Bibles real quick to Genesis. Verse, uh, chapter 31. And I'll, I'll go ahead and read it in chapter... Uh, uh, Starting in verse 1. Jacob heard that Laban's sons were saying, Jacob has taken everything our father owned and has gained all, his, all this wealth from what belonged to our father. And Jacob noticed that Laban's attitude toward him was not what it had been. Then the Lord said to Jacob, go back to the land of, the, this is the, 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 the second encounter, go back to the land of your fathers and to your relatives and I will be with you. Verse 4, so Jacob sent word to Rachel and Leah to come out of the fields where his flocks were. And he said to them, I see that your father's attitude toward me is not what it was before. But the God of my father has been with me. You know that I have worked for your father with all my strength, yet your father has cheated me by changing my wages ten times. However, God has allowed him, God has not allowed him to harm me. If he said the speckled ones will be your wages, then all the flocks gave birth to the speckled young. And if he said the streaked ones will be your wages, then all the flocks bore streaked young. So God has taken away your father's livestock and has given them to me. Now, we got to keep in mind that it was 20 years that he went through this. The last six years he went through this. Okay. Have you ever been cheated on your check before? Wait a minute. And you even calculated before you even got your check, right? You know, point zero eight on taxes, and, and you know, and, and I did about 10 hours overtime, and, and you're like, ching, ching, right? Doing all the math, right? And you end up short. What if the company said, oh, well, sorry. Oh, that ain't happening. Amen? That is not going to happen. You give me my $2. <laughs> oh, come on. Come on. <laughs> People of God. Amen? Amen? You give me my $2. That was an extra half a gallon of gas. <laughs> Three quarters of a gallon. Whatever it is. Amen? It's hard, it's hard to keep producing in the midst of opposition. It's hard. To be expected to produce in the same manner after you've been cheated, your wages have been cheated ten times. And to be expected to still produce. And then not only that, to have the favor of God fall upon that house because you're there. Oh, man. Can you imagine what Jacob went through? You, 
your father's attitude towards me has not been the same since I got here. Right? As a matter of fact, he's cheated my wages ten times. It doesn't say, if we go back to scripture, it doesn't say Jacob changed his attitude or changed his, the way he was doing things or nothing. To be expected to still produce even in the midst of opposition. I'm not, I mean, I'm, look, I'm going to be real. I don't know if I would have. <sighs> Pastor Benny, como que no? No, yeah. <laughs> Amen? But you're a pastor. Yeah, but those are my wages. Amen? Now, I know some of you, some of you guys may be a lot more holier than me, maybe, but <laughs> it's hard to produce to still do what God has called you to do? Even though the midst of opposition, man, people just coming against you and people burning you and hurting you. And it's like, man, God says, keep producing, Lord. Oh, Lord. Produce. 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 Lord, man, I, it's not fair. The injustice produce produce because in the third encounter with Jacob God showed him that it was him that made the flock God made the flock have all the speckled and have all the striped it doesn't say only the sheep or only the, the flock that was speckled and striped and spotted produced that he said that all the flocks all the flocks produced his wages what was his reminder in that vision? His wages. Because when he was going back home, guess what he took with him? All the speckled, all the striped, all the spotted. God will make it happen. It's hard, right? In the midst of opposition, it's like, Lord, man, what, what are you doing? Produce. Produce. I will, bring, I'll, I will bring it. You you stay doing what you're supposed to be doing. You keep producing. You keep doing this. Watch me. Watch me. Watch me. Right? What's that? What's that song? The, the watch me, watch me, watch me. Where are the youth at? Watch me, watch me. What's that song? The... I don't know what this is called. I know they dance. Every quinceanera that I've gone to, they do this, that song. The nene. There it is, the nene. Watch me, watch me, right? Anyway. I don't know who that was for. Even. <laughs> Produce. Produce. In the midst of opposition, it's pr Produce. Produce. Six years. Can you imagine the first time Jacob was probably cheated on his wages? He could have said, ah, breach a contract, that's it. Done. Second time, fifth, seventh time. Because once again, God knows how long we have to be in that fire. He knows how long. It's hard to, man, it, how do you say that to somebody, right? Oh, God, it's for a reason. It's hard to say that to somebody. Right? It's hard to tell somebody, man, there's going to be opposition, but stick through it. No, I don't want to stick through it. You don't. But there's favor when you do. Amen? I think I'm gonna have to split this to another, another part. Amen. Let's stand. I find it interesting that Jacob was running from his consequences, from the lies that he he began, the trickery that he did. He ran. He was running from his consequences. He was running from his lies. And that's when God got a hold of him. It wasn't when he was in his father's house. 
He was on the run. And I can honestly attest to that because I was on the run. And man, God got a hold of me. Encounters need to be more than just events. Encounters got to be more than just, you know, experiences. Encounters are life-changing. They have to be. They have to be. Because then an encounter is just going to be an event. An encounter is just going to be something, oh, yeah, it happened. It cannot be missed opportunities. We need to listen to God every single day. And you'll be surprised when God speaks to you. Man, I've heard God speak through me in movies sometimes. <sighs> you know, my son, he's, he's had dreams. Right? And sometimes me and my wife are sitting down with him, talking to him. But man, God uses my son too, even to speak to me. And my attitude could be was like, son, really? You're 10 years old. I'm much of a mature Christian than you. <laughs> right? Son, you really, come on. Amen? But God you will use whatever, whenever. There's no seniority with God. There's none. God doesn't say, oh, you've been 20 years? I'm going to use you more than I did this one. No, 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 no. That's not the way God works. But we get caught up in that. I got to be at this level for God to speak to me. Then explain Gideon. I got to be the best one. Then explain David. But we get stuck on that. We assume that God can't speak to us because we're young. Right? Because for whatever reason, whatever the world tells you, Whatever religion tells you, you assume that you can't. You can't hear from God. You're not at that level yet. And that's not the way God works. Youth, don't assume because you're young that God cannot speak to you. Don't assume that in the midst of your troubles, in the midst of, of whatever it is that you're going through, breakups, whatever, God will use whatever situation to say, come on. <laughs> Come on. But are we listening? Are we listening to his voice? Encounters cannot be I hopes. Encounters cannot be maybe one days. Encounters cannot be bueno, pues si quiere Dios. Eh. No. Lord, you said, I'm waiting for my next one. Yeah. Amen? This morning, as, as we go ahead and put some music on, amen. God's timing is now. What's delayed is our response. I'm learning this now. That's what, what delays is your response. Because we assume that we can't. Remember to produce even through opposition. God said he would. Lord, help me to remember why I even started coming. Help me remember why I even started this. Remind me again why. Because I can't see it. I can't find myself in it. I can't find myself in the opposition. I can't find myself in the hurt. Help me to remember why. Why am I here? Why did I even start coming to church? It's easy to forget in the midst of your anger, in the midst of your confusion. It's easy to forget.
produce. 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 Wait for your encounter. All you know is that you're supposed to produce. That's your first encounter. Salvation is not the end. Produce fruit. What now? Lord, put those people in my path. And if they've hurt me, Lord, help me to forgive them. Help me to see past it. Because I need my next encounter. It's not a matter of want. I need it. I need to get to the place, to the area, to the, to the, to the place where you have said that I'm going to be. I need to get there. So remove whatever it is that needs to be removed. Help me to produce the fruit. Hallelujah. Hope you're blessed. Amen. As you're standing there, I want you to just go ahead and reflect back on the last encounter that you had with God. Don't minimize what he's done or what he's spoken to you, but always be focused on what he said. Because the Bible says that the word that proceeded out of the mouth of God shall not return void unto him. It shall go forth, set out what it was sent to do, and it shall accomplish it. It didn't say at the time or the way that you wanted it to be accomplished, but it would be accomplished. What I love about this particular scripture is that God is addressing Jacob in his schemes. The way he used to be. And you read in the scripture there where he said, the God of my father has caused the increase. So he still wasn't looking at it as still his God. What I love about that is God's not predicated on doing things based on what you think of him. God is God regardless of what you think of him. And he will continue to do what he said before you were even created. It's how we begin to move towards closer to him to have that understanding and to have that next encounter. Because the last encounter that you want to have is the one that where you begin to walk different. That's the encounter you really want to have because that's a change that comes your way. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That is a change that has come your way. You may have laid down one way, but you've got up a different way. You may have entered one way, but you're leaving a different way. Something may have entered into your ear gates one way, but it's leaving a different way. Whatever curse that has come your way may have come in one way, but it's going to leave a different way. Do you understand what, what I'm saying? God has a way of using what has come at you or against you that has become your opposition to be the very thing that he's going to use to bless you on your transition out. Oh, hear this. You, you, you better hear this. What I love what Pastor Benny said is that he already got the two wives. And in the process of doing this opposition, the babies were being born. They were accounted into this lineage of Jacob. These babies were born. He didn't just leave there with two wives. He left there with some seed. If you've ever wondered why you're going through all kinds of opposition in your life, it's because God is getting the seed that he's given into your spirit, man, to be birthed through the opposition to come forth. You can't, oh my God, hear this. You can't reproduce without the pain. You need the pain in your life to produce inside of you what needs to come forth from you. Oh, y'all better hear this. Are you ready for encounters? You can have them. He wants to have them. Oh, this is for someone in here right now. Someone has felt like Jacob was waiting and 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 nothing changing. God is God. 
and he'll do what he said. But before he answers that one thing, he's going to increase in you his thing. So that when you come out of your opposition, you come out with some things that you didn't enter with. Are you hearing this? We need encounters. And we need encounters across churches all across America. We need encounters that people can stand and say, yes, there is evil in the world and there is trouble in the world. But my scripture says this, that fear not for God has overcome the world. There is all kinds of things that are taking place in society, but I am not part of this government. I'm part of the government of the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Walk knowing in your life that God is on your side. And I've said it over and over. Your God has to be different than your daddy's God and your mama's God. You make it personal. You make him personal. Amen. Whatever opposition, whatever opposition, God's going to use to multiply you. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for each and every individual as we stand in your presence right now. Lord, I thank you that not only have you spoken to them about encounters, but what we once come against, we have now found. And Lord, I thank you that what we lean on is what we have found. It's a new relationship that has been revealed because it was once hidden under the opposition. So we thank you right now, Father, for revelation to illuminate in our mind and our spirit what you have in store for us today. We thank you for it now. We give thanks unto you, not only for victory, deliverance, and healing, but we thank you for the encounter. We thank you for it now in Jesus' mighty name. And all of God's children said, Amen. Amen. Amen.